All right, guys, so here we go with our first video for the year. Um, translate negative 4, 6 to the left. That means we're going to subtract 5 um, and down 5 units. So if we do negative 4 minus 5, we're going to end up with negative 9. And a positive 6 minus 5, and we'll end up with a positive 1. Rotate counterclockwise. All right, so we are going to rotate it counterclockwise 90 degrees. So the 6, or the Y, is going to move to where the X was and become positive, and the 3 will stay the same. So 90 degrees clockwise is the same as 270 counterclockwise. And this time, the X and the Y will switch places, but the X will become opposite or negative in this case. All right, rotate 180 degrees. Remember, they just switch places. And rotating 180 degrees, it doesn't matter which direction you go. So, I mean, sorry, they don't switch places. It just becomes opposite values. So positive 5, negative 8. And when you get to number 5 and you reflect over the y-axis, the x becomes opposite. So negative 2, negative 10. And if you reflect over the x-axis, the y becomes opposite. So negative 3, positive 8. And then if point C is reflected over the y equals x, Remember, that's a line that kind of looks like this, a positive slope. Oh, y equals x, sorry, I just accidentally paused it. They're going to switch places. So a positive 3, negative 7. And then if it's reflected over the y equals negative x, remember that that's a, a line that goes downward in slope. And they switch places and become opposite. So the 3 becomes negative and the 7 becomes positive. Alright, so this one would be helpful if you were to have a graph. Alright, and you go ahead and you look at the y equals negative 2. So remember this is your y-axis, negative 2, 1, 2. That line would be right here. So if your point is over 6, And down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, it wants you to reflect it over this line. So your x isn't going to be changing any places. That's going to stay 6. We're just going to reflect it 2 over, which should plop it right there, which would be 6, 0. All right, collinear is f, points that lie on the same line. The midpoint formula, which will not be on this test, but the next one is x1 plus x2 over 2, comma y2, y1 plus y2 over 2. Um, segment bisector is going to be g, a segment line or plane that intersects a segment at its midpoint. Plane a, a flat surface that extends indefinitely in all directions. This will be your distance formula. d, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And you take the square root of all of that. Um, congruent angles is going to be i, angles that have equal measure. Angle addition postulate would be the measure of two adjacent angles that add up to a larger angle. So k and then H is going to be segment addition postulate. Measure of two segments add up to the measure of one larger segment. Let's go ahead and turn the page. Feel free to fast forward or pause me or whatever it might be. 
name the intersection of the line and the plane. We'll imagine this as a line that's going through a piece of paper. So H would be that point. Two points that are coplanar would be M and H. And two points that are collinear, you could say R, H, those two are collinear on the same line. You could say R, D, you could also say HD. Those are all collinear. So A is the midpoint of CM. And if AM, or sorry, if CA equals 2x minus 3, and CM, the entire segment, equals 5x minus 11, It wants you to find this piece right here. Well, since A is the midpoint, we know that these two segments are congruent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double this 2x minus 3 and set it equal to the whole segment, 5x minus 11. So I'm going to get 4x minus 6 equals 5x minus 11. And I will end up with 5 equals x, or x equals 5. It wants me to find a m, so I'm going to plug it back in. And I'm just going to plug it in to 2x, two but now that I know x is 5, minus 3, 10 minus 3, I'm going to get a m equals 7. Okay, in the following diagram, C is the midpoint of AE, so that means that from A to C, I'll just go ahead and mark, sorry, um, those two segments congruent. B is the midpoint of AC, so I'm going to go ahead and mark these two segments congruent. And it tells me that AE, the whole segment here, equals 28. So that means this will be 14, and this will be 14. And that CD, this little guy right here, is equal to 3. All right, so it wants me to find AC, which is the segment, so we know since the whole thing is 28, we know that half of it, or AC, is going to be equal to 14, and it wants me to find DE. Well, since we again know that this whole thing is 14, we're just going to do 14, subtract 3, and we will get 11. So DE will be equal, be equal to 11. R, S, and T are collinear, and S is between R and T. So it doesn't say about it being the midpoint, but here's R, here's T, and here's S. So R, S is equal to 2W plus 1, and S, T is equal to W minus 1, and R, T the whole segment is equal to 18. So use the segment addition postulate to solve for W and determine RS. So here's the picture I drew, which now you can see. I'm going to go ahead and take 2W plus 1. I'm going to add it to W minus 1 and set it equal to 18. All right, I'm going to combine my like terms and get 3 W equals 18, because these ones will have canceled out, and I'll get W equals 6. All right, I got to plug it back in for RS, and I'm going to get 2 times 6 plus 1, which will be 13. Okay, next up, I'm going to factor. I'm going to look for a GCF first, which there isn't any. 
So I'm going to take that middle brother, negative 14, and multiply the 24 times this one. And think of numbers, hey, what multiplies to a positive 24, but then adds to a negative 14, which is going to be a negative 12 and a negative 2. And it's only telling me to factor. So I'm done there. x minus 12 and x minus 2. Okay, over here, I'm going to look for a GCF, which in this case there is one. So x squared minus 7x minus 44 is what it's going to simplify to. So I'm going to go ahead and use my x factor, negative 7 on the bottom, negative 44 up top, which what multiplies to negative 44 and adds to a negative 7 would be negative 11 and a positive 4. So my answer would be 2 parentheses x minus 11 x plus 4. Okay, so I helped a lot of you guys with this question, but I know it's a bit confusing. So KJ and KM, they're opposite rays. And KN, this segment right here, comes through and it bisects this whole angle right there. And that's going to be true for all of these questions, 8, 9, and 10. So it might not look congruent, but it is, based on what they tell us. So the first thing, JKN, is going to be 8x minus 13, and NKL is going to be 6x plus 11. No, 11. Well, because I know that those are congruent, right, they're bisected, I'm going to set them equal. 8x minus 13 equals 6x plus 11. I'm going to end up with 2x equals 24, and x equals 12. It wants me to find jkn, so I'm going to plug it into angle jkn and get 8 times 12 ah, minus 13 and it will give me 83 degrees. So x is going to be equal to 12, and the measure of angle j, k, n equals 83 degrees. OK. So now it says, suppose j, k, l, the whole angle, equals 9y. So I'm going to just go ahead and show you 9y plus 15 and jkn, this little guy right here, equals 5y plus 2. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to also say that this is 5y plus 2. And I'm going to combine those, or times them by 2, and set it equal to the whole angle. So I'm going to have 2 times 5y plus 2 to represent both of these angles and set it equal, let me just zoom out a little bit, and oop, that's kind of far. To the whole angle, 9y plus 15. So we're going to have 10y plus 4 equals 9y plus 15. And we'll end up with y equals 11. So y equals 11, and now it wants me to find jkl. So jkl, the whole angle. So I'm going to go ahead and do 9 times 11 plus 15, 99 plus 15, and get 114. So the measure of angle jkl equals 114. Okay, next up, all right, so, let's see here, um, 
it gives me JKN, which is this angle over here, right? And it gives me NKL, this angle over here. What I need to remember is JKN and NKL, they are equal to each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 2 times 3x plus 30 and set it equal. I mean, and add 2x. So I have 3x plus 30 plus 3x plus 30 or times 2 plus 2x. And I'm going to set it equal to 180 because I can see that these three angles, they form this straight line right here. All right, so I'm going to have 6x plus 60 plus 2x equals 180. I'll simplify a little bit and get 8x equals 120 and x equals 15. So x equals 15 and now I need to find NKL. So I am going to do 3 times 15 plus 30, 45 plus 30, and get the measure of angle NKL equals 75 degrees. Okay, next up is number 11. I'm going to look here and see that these are a linear pair, so they have to add to 180. So 25x plus 8 plus 9x plus 2 equals 180. I'll combine like terms and get 34x plus 10 equals 180. And I'll get 34x equals 170 and x equals Five. So here's x equals 5. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug x into this one because I know these are vertical angles and congruent. So part 2 here, I'm going to go ahead and do 9 times 5 plus 2, set it equal to 7y plus 5 and solve. So 45 plus 2 7 y plus 5 47 equals 7 y plus 5 42 equals 7 y and y equals 6 oops can't really see it got cut off but moving right along Halfway through, so supplementary angles, let's move this up a little bit, meaning it adds to 180. So we're going to take angle 1 and angle 2 and we're going to add them together and set it equal to 180. So 4x plus 8x equals 180. I'll have 12x equals 180 and x equals 15. Well, I need to plug it in to okay. um, So for angle 1, we are going to do 4 times 15 and we are going to get 60 degrees. All right, and for angle two, we are gonna do eight times 15 and we are going to get 120 degrees. And you'll notice that when you sum those together, you do get 180. All right, so complementary angles, we wanna think of 90 degrees so think of it kind of like that. All right, here's angle four and here's angle three. Together they form 90 degrees. So again, I'm gonna do x plus 
plus 24 plus just x and set it equal to 90 degrees. I'll combine my terms. 2x plus 24 equals 90. 2x equals, oops, 90. 66 and x equals 30. So now I'll just go ahead and plug them in. I'll know that angle 4 is just equal to x. So that's easy. That's just not 30, 33, wow, sorry. And for angle three, measure of angle three, I'm gonna do 33 plus 24, and I will get 57 degrees. Okay, so what you might have noticed about 14, and 16 is they are the same problem. So good for you. Once you've solved for one, you can solve for both of them. So two lines intersect to form angles. If the two adjacent angles formed, let's say this is 4x right here and 5x minus 27 here, these two angles together, they form a 180 degree angle, a straight angle, or a straight line. So I'm going to do 4x. I'm going to add 5x minus 27, and I'll set them equal to 180. All right, so I get 9x minus 27 equals 180, and 9x equals 207, and x equals 23. Okay, so that's just x. I'm going to go ahead and plug them in. So let's just say angle 1. Angle 1, I'll do 4 times 23. And that will give me 92 degrees. And for angle 2, I will do 5 times 23 minus 27, and angle 2 will give me 88 degrees. Okay, and then the same thing goes for here. If it's a linear pair, this time it's just going to be 4x and 5x minus 27. Just a different visual, but the same idea. And, again, you would have 92 degrees and 88 degrees. Angle L and angle P. All right, number 15 is a little different. Vertical angles, so they're vertical angles, meaning that they're congruent. So 16x minus 9 and 4x plus 3. All right, because they're vertical angles and I know they're congruent, I'm just going to set them equal to each other. So 16x minus 9 equals 4x plus 3. And I'll end up with 12x equals 12. x equals 1. Ah. And I can just plug it into one of them. It's going to be a very small number. Well, I guess I could say x equals one. And it sounds like I just want to plug it into here. So I'm going to do four times one plus three and get seven. I know that both angles are going to be equal to seven degrees. All right, we're getting to the end here. All right, so the table below, whoops, let's move this up and straighten it out a bit. Hope to get an iPad by the end of the year so that I can do these all nice and neat. Shows the coordinates of W, X, Y, Z in square W prime, X prime, Y prime, Z prime after a transformation. What are the points 
what is the point of x after the transformation? So we notice that something happens, and if you can identify our x is going down by 4 and up, down by 1. So it's a translation. We're going to write translate x minus 4, y minus 1. And so we're going to look at our x value and we're going to do that. 3 minus 4, it's going to give us a negative 1. And 4 minus 1 is going to give us a positive 3. So you just want to look at, hey, how is it getting from here to here? And write an algebraic rule in coordinate notation. So x comma y, and write what's happening. It moves 5 units to the left, so we're going that way, right? Minus 5, and 6 units up. So going up would be positive. And that would be our rule. Okay, so write the coordinates of the vertices for triangle ABC after a reflection over the y equals negative 1. Alright, y equals negative 1 is right there. I'm going to graph my original triangle, so negative 3 up to my a, negative 1, up 6, and c is going to be over 6, up 1. Okay, so remember with a line like this, there is no real rule. We just count how many units away. So it's two units away. I'm going to go two units on this side, and that's going to give me my C prime, which that coordinate is a positive 6, comma, negative 3. My A is 1, 2, 3 units away. I'm going to count 1, 2, 3 units away here, and B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'll count 7 also. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Ah. Triangle got a little discombobulated there. But we're going to have negative 3, negative 3, ah, negative 1, negative 8 for our new coordinates. Okay. So we're going to reflect it over the y-axis first. And when I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and do L prime and then K prime and then J prime. All right, so that point is going to be negative 5, positive 7. Oops, it would help if you could see it. I'll just move this stuff up. Negative 8, 1, and negative 1, comma 0. All right, now we're going to rotate it 270 clockwise, so 1, 2, three and our new points if you want to see I will go ahead and show you just kind of tracing my coordinate plane ah a bit and I've got my L and my J my K Not the straightness of lines, but there's 90 degrees, 180, and 270. So I'll try to plot a hole here if I can, and then I kind of have an idea. 
of where my points are. So this is my J prime, my double prime, my K double prime, and my L double prime. Should have used a different color, guys, sorry. All right, and those coordinates will be negative seven, negative five, negative one, negative eight, and zero, negative one. And our last page rotate square ABD 90 degrees clockwise and reflect over the X axis. So if you'd like, I'm going to just go ahead and use some patty paper here. A, B, C. And D, and I usually just make a small X, but the first thing is 90 degrees clockwise. So that's right about here. And I'm going to go ahead and press those points down and hope that I can kind of see where they were at. D prime, A prime. C prime and B prime. All right, so that's those coordinates. And now from there, I reflect it over the x-axis, which puts me right about here. That worked out nicely. C double prime, B double prime, A double prime, and D double prime. I'll go ahead and record my new coordinates. So this is for my the first image I translated, which will be a seven positive positive seven positive six. B will be positive six positive two. C will be positive 2, positive 3, 3, D will be positive 3, positive 7. A double prime thing start to get negative. So positive 7, negative 6. B is a positive 6, negative 2. C is a positive 2, negative 3. D is a positive 3, negative 7. if we're looking for the rule for this next one. It's x minus 9 because it moves to the left 9 units. If you wanted to compare your positions, E would be a good one to reference. And then it shifts up 4 units. So it moves over 9 and then up 4. All right, the one that I came up with here, my first one was rotate 180 degrees, and then my second one was to translate it. I did x minus 1 and y minus 3, and I'll show you how that works. So this was my original image right here. Here's L, here's M, and here's N. And so I rotated it 180, which would put it right about here. And then I moved it down three. Sorry, one, two, three, and to the left one, which is right where it needs to be. And that's your study guide, guys. Hopefully it's not too long of a video, but I think you're going to do great. Let me know if you have questions.